Thank you very much. So um, I will only give a brief introduction to the project. Uh, I am Horacio Sajon from uh, the Talent Research Group and this is a collaboration with uh, the Music Technology Group and also we have as principal investigator as Ricardo Baisa. Um, and then I will pass the, word, the, the floor to uh, Luis. So the outline of the presentation will be first a motivation for, um, for this uh, activity in the Maria de Maetsu initiative. The challenges of uh, natural language processing in uh, particular uh, in the music domain. Uh, then Luis will be talking about identifying musical entities in uh, free text. Uh, also in addition to identify uh, musical entities in text, he will tell us how he um, computes relationships between, uh, identifies relationships between entities and also how he has uh, carried out a study on um, on music uh, sentiment analysis in music repositories uh, with the objective of applying it to musicology. Then we will also describe uh, some dissemination and outreach activities. So the motivation. So there is textual information about music created every day and making sense of what is written in those um, uh, textual, textual uh, documents can contribute to uh, musicology and investigation generally in music information retrieval. So by transforming textual content into um, some uh, knowledge representation, you will be able to obtain um, uh, knowledge, to infer some knowledge. For example, you may have a huge database of um, musical genres, artists, and so on, and you may infer that at a particular time there was this, um, the born of a particular music genre because some political or social situation appeared. So you will be able also to um, ask and receive an answer uh, to complex questions. So for example, you may be able to ask uh, how many guitar con concertos Rodrigo composed and which one is the most popular one. In order to do that, you will need to go to a database. First, understand that Rodrigo is one possible composer. Uh, you will need to understand what is a, a guitar concerto. You will need to uh, in, in, um, extract different uh, information about uh, con concerts composed by this, uh, by this composer. And then finally, to query some uh, uh, databases in order to find which one is the most popular one. So um, also um, uh, transforming textual information into uh, knowledge, um, actual knowledge, will, be, will allow the visualization of information, not uh, the typical graph that we see of concurrence between entities, but also more meaningful relationships, like relationships why, the, why two um, um, uh, artists are related, which is the relationship between them, or which is the, relation, the set of relationships that uh, link them. Uh, by having also these um, uh, relationships between um, uh, artists uh, and uh, works of art, we will be able also to improve navigation and improve recommendation, for example. So um, Music Mix NLP is, uh, is a project that brings together people from uh, the Natural Language Processing Group and Music Technology, and it's a collaboration that started between um, Luis and uh, Sergio in 2014 already. And, um, this uh, project will fill a, a much uh, an, an existing gap between uh, music information retrieval or music technology and natural language processing and uh, we try we will try to um, bridge this gap with our uh, technology and um, uh, this um, kind of activity has been uh, well received by uh, the places where um, uh, Sergio and Luis have been presenting uh, their work so there is um, uh, people in the music technology and in NLP are very keen on this type of uh, collaboration. So what are the challenges? So um, one of the principal activities in uh, natural language processing is try to identify entities in text. This is a core activity where you try to identify the name of a person, the name of an organization and so on. But in the case of music, um, uh, this is particularly difficult because uh, brand names, album names, songs have very uh, specific uh, characteristics that probably a natural language processing tool, a standard of the shelf, will uh, fail on any text that talks about music, will be unable to identify any music-related um, uh, entity. So uh, we need to deal with this um, uh, difference in, in domain. 
Um, so uh, all systems that are ad hoc should be adapted or should be improved or uh, machine learning techniques should be used in order to be able to operate on uh, texts that pertain to the music domain. So entity recognition uh, is one of the particular activities that we carry out in this project. And the typical procedure that you will find in available tools is that they, they rely uh, pretty much on lexicons or gazetteers that will help identify um, entities. So this can be uh, an efficient thing when you try to identify, for example, idiosyncratic names that the symphony number, blah, 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 because you have a, a specific lexicon that you can uh, uh, take advantage of to identify entities. But what happens if you have um, uh, different names for uh, the set uh, musical, um, uh, musical entity, like the ninth? The ninth can refer to anything. If you don't have enough context, you will not be able to identify that the ninth refers to an actual symphony by Beethoven or by any other um, um, author. Um, also, we have uh, the problem of ambiguity, as ambiguity uh, is inherent in natural language. So if you have Carmen, Carmen can refer to the opera, but also to the character, or can refer to uh, the character in the opera or the character in um, the play by Merimé. So um, you face all these difficulties. There is also variability. You can have uh, names that actually uh, are like common name entities and also um, uh, variations of uh, names of, um, uh, of, um, uh, of uh, musical groups that have to be taken into account. Um, common names like Madonna will be, will be used for artists and you don't know whether it refers to the Queen of Pop or whether it is uh, is referring to a representation of the Virgin Mary. Okay, so um, if we take the case of Spain, so you will have Placido Domingo in Madrid this Saturday, okay, so uh, because Placido Domingo is also common vocabulary in our, in our language, it means um, pleasant Sunday, so probably a, a natural language processing system in Spanish will have difficulties in identifying that Placido Domingo is uh, the, the renowned artist and will probably uh, uh, believe that is uh, talking about the weather. In any case, we face uh, very various uh, difficulties in natural language processing in the music domain. Okay, it is also true that uh, current uh, systems in um, uh, natural language processing um, rely on the availability of knowledge bases like uh, Yago or Dbpedia or Freebase or Wikidata in order to create lexicons or vocabularies that then you can match against the text in order to find the entities that are of your interest. The problem with this uh, database or knowledge repositories is that they lack um, uh, many pieces of information. So they cover, for example, the most popular things, but they don't cover the long tail, for example. And the long tail, you find it in free text. So, and this is uh, the challenge that we face. And these um, this, uh, knowledge repositories need to be constantly updated. And um, uh, currently they are updated just by looking at a structure of the sources of information and not to unstructure the sources of information. So there is a lot of unstructured information in textual format available out there, like artist biographies or articles that talk about specific um, uh, pieces of music or artists, and also obviously a free text that uh, can be exploited for, from uh, Wikipedia in order to um, identify uh, useful entities in the music domain, to contribute to create knowledge bases and to contribute to useful applications. Now in what follows, um, uh, Luis will present three case studies on the application of natural language processing to uh, the music domain. Um, thank you. So, thank you, Horacio. Um, so, well, after the introduction, um, I'm going to just very quickly go over uh, three projects that uh, are already framed within the Maria uh, de Maestro initiative. Um, and the first one is about uh, what Horacio just explained, the, <coughs> the task of identifying music entities in text. Ah, vale. ah, sí. Much better. Um, yeah, so, so because of the problems that Horacio was explaining, um, well, of the, one of the, one of the uh, possible approaches, one of the alternatives could be 
um, to, to uh, train an algorithm on uh, very uh, high quality data in, in terms of uh, uh, entities annotated in the, music, in the music domain. So all these uh, characteristics, all these uh, idiosyncrasies that he has been describing would be uh, manually checked. And then uh, ideally we would have a, a clever way to, to deal with this, with this kind of variability. Um, so, well, in, in this case, uh, uh, one of our proposals was to automatically construct a, a very large uh, document collection uh, with thousands of music entities, uh, specifically with, we focused on album, song, artist and record label. And the, the idea so, uh, was to hide, even if you didn't have everything, every single uh, mention annotated in your data set, whatever you had had to be of very, of, uh, very high quality. Uh, because in this case, uh, in this way, uh, um, you would have uh, uh, high quality source data, uh, for example, for uh, propagation, semi-supervised learning, etc. Um, in, 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 uh, in this paper, what we did uh, was to process thousands of biographies from the, from the website Last.fm. And, um, and the method, which uh, we named after, after uh, so the, the acronym was Elvis, uh, and it's an entity linking voting and integration system. So, and the, the, the basic idea behind it is that even if you take isolated tools that, uh, as Horacio said, uh, would do pretty poorly in, in dealing with text, with, with musical text, um, um, if you uh, build a framework where you can plug an arbitrary number of them and then uh, look at the degree of agreement they have in different text spans, uh, then you can use this information as a, as a confidence measure. Uh, Sergio is uh, the, the developer behind it and yeah, uh, the code is available, so it's a, it's a framework where you can plug any, t, uh, name, any uh, named entity recognition or entity linking system and it uh, unifies the output and provides you with a, with a confidence measure for each of the predictions it does. And also the data set that I will describe in the next slide is also available from the, from the MTG website. Um, yeah, so this is uh, to show that it actually worked. So we manually checked uh, 1,400 uh, predictions. So we did uh, an extensive evaluation of the quality of, this, uh, of the disambiguation with different type of configurations and different um, degrees of agreement. And well, what I would like to highlight is that uh, when, when, when all the systems that we tried in our paper uh, agreed, uh, the, the precision, like the, the, the correctness of their prediction was, was very high. Um, so that was um, one, one project uh, uh, that uh, should set the, the foundations for what we want to do in the future, which is, which is training entity linking systems and named entity disambiguation algorithms specific for the music domain, uh, ideally to be able to cope with the, with the vari variability that Horacio was explaining er earlier. And another interesting um, um, thing that can be done is to uh, take advantage of the fact that you already have identified entities and disambiguated in large uh, text collections uh, to um, um, encode relationships in natural language so that you can, for example, build a large uh, knowledge graph out of them. And from there, this graph can be used for, for many other uh, applications. Um, so without going into much detail, uh, it, it's what we are um, I'm, I'm happy to, to to, we were very happy to, uh, to see nice results uh, from a collaboration that fo uh, relies a lot on linguistic information. So um, our approach was based on, um, on crafting a set of uh, linguistically motivated rules over the syntactic tree for every sentence where at least two sentences were, uh, two entities were already disambiguated. Um, so in, the, in this case, for example, we would have the sentence uh, hated here was written by Wilco frontman Jeff Tweedy and well, the algorithm would uh, first identify the, the text uh, spans, the offsets of each of the, of the entities, then assign them uh, a type and then disambiguating them to any uh, available knowledge repository. So you would have your music range ID for hated here or for the case of Wilco and, and Jeff Tweedy, uh, their corresponding Wikipedia pages. Um, as I said, um, um, instead of just looking at co-occurrence or, or other bag of words approaches that put together entities and, and match them together uh, according to how uh, near they appear in text, 
uh, we wanted to have something a little bit more uh, linguistically motivated and, and, and the, the triples, the uh, 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 left argument, relation, right argument that we, that we extracted look like this. No? So Hated Here was written by Jeff Tweedy or Jeff Tweedy uh, was the frontman of, uh, of Wilco. If you do this over thousands of sentences and, over, and with thousands of triples, not only you can um, um, uh, construct a large uh, graph in the music domain, but also you can reward better relations and punish uh, those ones maybe which are sparse, maybe they are redundant, maybe they are wrong because something might have gone wrong uh, during the pipeline, etc. Um, so this was a very uh, nice example. A nice application of this graph was actually uh, not music recommendation, but rather explanation of music recommendation. Um, the, the idea is that on paper there are certain uh, artists or certain songs that should not have anything in common and uh, traditional recommender systems work a lot on, well, if, if user A and user B listen to the same uh, set of songs, uh, if user C has something in common with, with user B, maybe what user A listens to, maybe that can be applied as well. But it, it's, it may, it can, we, 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 we found that it could be not the recommendation itself, uh, but rather um, giving a, a, a reason why you got a recommendation could be interesting. And we found a very nice example that I wanted to show. It's, uh, so imagine you like uh, Tom Waits. Tom Waits, for those of you who don't know, is like the, a very um, obscure and, um, and, well, not the happy type of, 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 of musician, we, we could say, right? And, and actually the recommender system that went out of the graph uh, uh, recommended a song by Lady Gaga, which is Technopop, so it, it, on paper it shouldn't have anything to do. Um, and the explanation is it's, it's, it comes from the path uh, that exists between them as because and since we have uh, the edges in the path are uh, um, um, relations expressed in natural language you can also you can actually uh, see why is, is this the case why you get a recommendation of Lady Gaga if what you like is Tom Waits so apparently Bruce Springsteen covered Jersey Girl which is the song that uh, the, the Tom Waits song and Bruce Springsteen uh, had performed fairly often with uh, with uh, someone called Clarence Clemons, which I found out that is the saxophonist over here. And, and this same saxophonist had performed live with, with Lady Gaga. So, well, I'm not going to play them, but uh, if, you, if you actually listen to them, they are much more similar than you would expect uh, uh, um, in theory. So we, we've, we found this was a, a very nice application. We ran a survey of... Uh, of people rating uh, the quality of the of the recommendations, and actually this kind of uh, of explanation was uh, highly valued for people who were not trained uh, in terms of, of musical knowledge. So people who were a little bit ignorant, like like myself, like I see this and I say this makes a lot of sense. And well, if if this is actually true, this is great. People who knew a lot about music didn't find this uh, very useful, but still, um, yeah. Um, there were other applications, but they are, uh, we didn't put them here, but um, yeah. And finally, uh, the, last, uh, the last of the three papers that we have done uh, uh, in, within the, the, the time that we had uh, within, uh, for, for what has uh, been the Maria de Maestu collaboration so far, was to uh, work uh, with a large uh, collection of, of reviews of, uh, in the music domain, the uh, music products from Amazon. And the idea was to uh, see, uh, to extract correlations between how people felt about certain music products, especially albums, and either the date of the review or the date of publication if, of the album. Um, we did, so this was a very, it was a very heterogeneous paper, so half of it was on machine learning and text classification and the other half was on, on musicology and, and, and a little bit, you know, like digress, digressing. Um, so, and, but I think that by far the most interesting part is the application of this for, for musicology. Um, so the sentiment analysis framework was something that uh, uh, came from a, 
from a framework from, from Dublin, where Sergio stayed uh, uh, last year. And basically, so it works uh, like this. Instead of giving you a score for the whole piece of text, it's what they call aspect level sentiment analysis. So first it identifies uh, key elements in the, in the review, and it assigns each element, uh, like uh, guitar riffs or vocals, it assigns a score according to, well, uh, presence or absence of certain adjectives and, and so on. Um, so, well, we had like a kind of an extensive study and, um, well, one of the interesting uh, findings we found was that if you looked at the, at the, at the, at the, re at the reception of, uh, and the criticism of, of albums in the genres of reggae and pop uh, across years, uh, it was pretty clear that uh, there were uh, uh, significant peaks in the 70s in the case of reggae and in the 60s in the case of of, uh, of pop and uh, well it, it, it kind of made we thought it made a lot of sense to to associate uh, these these peaks with with the appearance of key artists uh, in, in in both genres um, as I said this was uh, this part of the of the of the project is a little bit more speculative but we thought we thought it was very interesting for for as a as a as a first step um, for making life easier for for researchers in humanities and musicology so that they can benefit from the information they get from um, well from automatic processing of of textual content and well in terms of dissemination and outreach uh, all this and much more we will explain in in Izmir in in August in a tutorial that uh, is called natural language processing for music information retrieval and but it's also for for musicology so we will uh, i'm 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 expecting i'm hoping for a little bit of discussion by people who disagree with what i just showed so um, but well, in, in the idea is this: to 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 present both the the part that is uh, that we can apply to to music information retrieval, recommendation, artist similarity, automatic playlist generation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but also its application to to musicology. Uh, so the tutorial. This is actually the first slide of the of the tutorial. So since we have it almost ready, uh, Sergio, myself, and and Shuo will be uh, the speakers, and we are advised by Horacio and and Xavier. And and that's everything, so thank you.